Hi, this is Justin Coletti from Sonic Scoop, coming at you once again from Joel Lambert Mastering. And once again, thanks to our friends over at B&H, we get to put in another part of this instructional series on intermediate and advanced compression techniques. In our other installments in this series, we've been looking at parallel compression and sidechain compression. This time, we're going to take a deeper look at serial compression. Serial compression really just means one compressor feeding into another in series, one after the other. And generally, we're going to be looking for something slightly different out of each compressor. There's no rules about how to do this, but here's some guidelines. Often, you want to put faster compressors before slower compressors, and your higher ratio compressors in front of your lower ratio compressors. The idea is that if you have a kind of slower, lower ratio compressor second, a more fairly gentle compressor, you don't want to accidentally feed it any huge spikes that are going to make that slower compressor kind of overreact and uh, maybe not recover in time. So instead, you might use a higher ratio compressor first to tame peaks before you go into your slower ratio compressor. But you can also do a lot of playing around with the shape and the envelope of the sound by putting your fast compressor first and your slower compressor second. Here's the idea. Your faster compressors are going to shave off the kind of transient attack on a sound. And this can be a great thing because a really fast attack time can give you more consistency in each hit. And you can get much more dynamic control. But too much of this uh, fast attack compressor kind of vibe can leave your sound feeling a little uh, dull and lifeless. On the other hand, a slower compressor can allow a lot of initial attack and a lot of initial transient through. This can add a lot of punch and initial impact to the sound. But with a really slow attack, you might not get a lot of dynamic control. You're just letting so much of the signal through. But by stacking a fast compressor first, that's going to shave off your transients and make each impact a little more consistent, you can then take that sound and put it into a slower attack compressor to bring back some of the initial attack, but this time more consistent than before. So this way we can kind of get the best of both worlds, the consistency of a fast attack compressor and the impact and life and vibrance of a slower attack compressor. Let's try this out, focusing uh, first on drum bus, but you can do this in so many different places, uh, from uh, vocals to guitars to you name it. All right, let's dive right in. Again, we have a great track here from our friends over to Graw Sound. Uh, this mix is sounding incredible, even with the faders at zero, but I still think we can uh, do a couple of tricks here and there to get even more out of this track. So first, let's go down to our drums, and we'll create a bus for our drums to make sure we can process them all together. I'll do this by hitting Shift-Command-N. That is my shortcut in Pro Tools for creating a new track. And then I will create a stereo aux input. You can also access this from the track menu up here. Track menu. The same concept applies in any DAW you might be using. Now I'm going to want to set all of these tracks to come out of the same bus, so I'm going to hold down Shift Option and select Bus 1-2. Holding down Shift Option while I set my output here will apply that change to all of the selected tracks. Now I'm going to take my drum bus, give it a name, and go ahead and set its input to Bus 1-2. Last thing I'll do is I'll solo safe this drum bus. Now, when I solo all of my drums, I'll be hearing just the drums. Let's hear it in the chorus. Sounds pretty good. But let's see if we can spice this up with a little bit of compression. In our parallel compression video, I did compression on a parallel track and left our main track alone. But just to experiment and get to hear the effects of serial compression, let's try this on our main track. I'm going here to our compressor limiter, and we're going to start off with a high ratio, fast attack, fast release compressor. And this effect will be 
a little dramatic at first, just so you can hear it. That's a little bit much. So let's back off on this threshold. Hear how it sounds now. Man, this drummer did a pretty great job. These hits are so consistent to begin with. Uh, but I think you can get a sense for uh, some of the additional consistency we're adding with this compressor. Uh, and you also get a sense that we're losing some of the initial attack. Let's listen to this one more time with that in mind. First, without, then with. We're getting a little bit more heft here, but are maybe missing some of the clarity and initial impact of the sound. So let's try to add on another compressor. I'm holding down Option and dragging just to duplicate this compressor. And this time, let's add on one that has a really slow attack time and still kind of medium fast release here, and maybe a bit of a lower ratio. Let's hear how this sounds. Do you hear how some of that initial impact is coming back into the sound when we put on this slow attack compressor? Let's hear these two different sounds separately from each other. And this is really one of the best ways to learn how to hear compression really, really well, is to put on some heavy compression and play around with your attack setting. Get a sense for how it's changing the shape and the envelope and the push and pull of each sound. So let's first hear a fast attack compressor and then we'll hear the slow attack compressor, each by themselves. So here it is with a fast attack compressor. Great, so we're adding some heft to the sound, even more consistency, all this drummer's remarkably consistent to begin with, uh, but we're losing some of that initial impact and attack. Let's hear it now with just the slow attack compressor. I really think you can hear that most on the snare, how we get some extra articulation on the snare, some extra kind of crack out of it. Now, if this drummer was a little inconsistent, and he's not, the drawback would be that we're not getting as much dynamic control. So this is one way of thinking about uh, compressors, or at least the attack on compressors, is what portion of the instrument do we need to control? If we need a lot more consistency on the initial hit, we'll go for a faster attack compressor. But if doing that sucks too much life and initial impact out, we can get some of it back. We can accentuate some of that attack that we lost with a slow attack compressor. So when we put the two together, we can get the stability of a fast attack compressor with the pungent impact and clarity of a slow attack compressor. Let's hear this one more time. This time, no compressor, then our fast, then our slow, then our fast, and then both together. Here we go.
Now that's an interesting effect. Uh, some of those changes were very rapid and could be very subtle, but in the end, I think you <laughs> heard us wind up with a sound that's maybe a little over-compressed, and I probably wouldn't want to sound uh, quite that over-compressed on my drum bus, unless it was for a special effect. All right, so by now, I think you should be starting to get some insights into how uh, attack times can sound pretty different, and about how you can stagger your attack times, sometimes feeding a fast attack into a slower attack. And that allows you to get the best of both worlds, right? Kind of shaving off some of the initial transients, getting some control on the initial impact, and then going through a slower attack compressor to bring back some of that initial impact. I recommend that you try uh, these techniques for yourself, because that's the real way to learn them. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes you can have kind of slow and softer ratio compressors that'll act really nicely with a lot of sources, but if you hammer them too hard with signal, too hard with uh, peaks, uh, they might not respond in a way that's consistent. So often engineers will uh, sometimes take a faster attack and higher ratio compressor, maybe even a limiter, and use that first before going into a slower, more subtle compressor. Now again, there are no rules. There may be times and places when it makes sense to completely reverse this. It's not unheard of to put a gentle compressor first and then feed that gently compressed signal into a limiter. Uh, that can work too. Try these things out for yourself, uh, but the most important thing is to know how some of these parameter adjustments are going to affect the signal and going to affect your sound. I hope you've enjoyed this look at serial compression. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, once again brought to you by our friends at B&H. You want more great videos like this one? You go to B&H, you sign up for their newsletter and mailings there. I'll be waiting for you in your inbox. Also, be sure to check us out at sonicscoop.com. Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get great articles uh, with gear reviews, tutorials, interviews with producers and engineers. And we'll send you notices whenever we put out new videos like this one with B&H. This is some of our favorite stuff to do. If you haven't already, check out the other installments in this series on parallel compression and sidechain compression. And if you ever have any questions, reach out anytime. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.